Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I bet that uh, many of those who watch our videos uh, are on a broadband connection, and as such, uh, they are likely connected to the internet all the time. And uh, when you are online, you have the opportunity of being exposed uh, to the internet, and if you're not protected, well, then you can find yourself in very precarious situations. Now for this reason, many people will encourage you to run some kind of firewall inside your operating system, no matter which operating system you happen to be using. And the firewall acts as a way uh, to protect yourself from outside invaders. And in some cases, uh, can help you recognize what software inside your computer is making calls outside your computer, uh, monitoring spyware and whatnot. So. The question came in the chat room the other day from uh, a person who goes by the handle UJ, or UJ, as I like to call him. He asked, what is port forwarding? And it's very much related to the firewall in the sense that uh, we've talked about this before as well. All of these services, all this software um, that happens to be internet accessible and may have been designated a certain port to be used, uh, both internal and external. Uh, so. If you're running, let's say, on your computer, um, your own IRC server, uh, and you want uh, to access that IRC server from outside of your home network or outside or away from that actual computer, if you've got a firewall up, well, there's no way for you to get back in unless, of course, you open up that specific port. Now, for IRC, the port that's usually used is 6667. And this is why, if you want to join our chat room at live.perillo.com, we make it easy. We just give you a little flash client that SC Thor worked on. Uh, we don't tell you, you know, you don't have to, you don't need anything fancy uh, to get into the chat room. But if you use your own IRC program like Merck, or let's say Colloquy for the Mac, um, you know, th there are many. It will always ask you what port are you trying to connect to to connect to this IRC server, and it's usually 6667. So, now what I've done on my computer, my Mac, uh, in order to be able to access the IRC client on the Mac, I have to open up that port 6667 uh, so that I can access it through my iPhone. Colloquy has a nice little uh, web app that will allow me to access a live chat room using my iPhone. We've done a demonstration on that as well. But to do that, I got to open up that port. I got a firewall working on my router, but 6667 has to be open so that I can get to it no matter where I'm at on the internet. I mean, using this particular device that's obviously not on my home network if it's not connected to my local access point, my, my Wi-Fi access point connected to the router. Now, the question is, is that on my home network, I've got like 10 or some odd computers, if I open up that port 6667, how is it going to know where to go? Because I'm running network address translation, NAT, uh, on this as well, so that internet traffic knows where to go once it hits the router. Uh, I've got specific IP addresses here, one, uh, 192.168.1. whatever, and that's what people usually have on their home network. Those are just internal addresses. You could go to that IP address and you'd never, you'd never get anywhere other than if it was set up on your local home network. Uh, so in order for me to know that, or t for an application to know, if I go to my general IP address, port 6667, uh, which is usually designated by uh, the website colon 6667 for that specific port, it would need to know, the router would need to know where to automatically forward anybody trying to access my WAN, my general web IP, my web, I'm sorry, my IP address that my ISP Comcast gives me, port 6667, it has to know where to forward it to. So I say, okay, uh, port 6667, I'm telling my router, uh, anytime someone tries to access port 6667, automatically just tell it to go to my Mac Mini. That's Just forward it automatically. Don't forward it to any other computer, just go directly to the Mac Mini. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. And then from that point, then I have to secure uh, that particular uh, application so that you can only get in with a password or through authentication and whatnot. But port forwarding essentially allows you uh, to uh, take uh, an internal computer on your home network and open it up 
to the general internet and say, all right, this port's open, but it's only going to be open to this specific part of my home network, just this particular computer, this particular machine. Doing this can be, uh, you know, you're you're exposing yourself. It can be uh, precarious in, in theory. Um, is it enough for me to turn it off? Not necessarily. I've got other security mechanisms certainly in place. Uh, but this is something that uh, I kind of have no choice. If I want to access uh, that particular chat room from anywhere, specifically the one that I've got uh, installed on this particular machine, I have to use some kind of port forwarding mechanism uh, to access it you know, from a device like an iPhone or any device, not just an iPhone. The port forwarding, again, uh, allows you to forward requests uh, f coming from an outside uh, outside your home network, outside your network machine, into your local network. Uh, I've had to do this for other devices as well, not just uh, Colloquy, um, but uh, it's something that I've that I know of never been uh, attacked in any strange ways. Uh, I don't think anybody cares to try to get in, and if they did, quite honestly, they're not going to find anything that exciting. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's what port forwarding is. Uh, I realize it's, it's somewhat complex, but if you look into your router, and it's usually got a web-based interface, it's probably got a little port forwarding page in there, and then it'll ask you, you know, what's the external port, what's the internal port, uh, what's the internal IP address that we're directing you to, the, the internal IP address being the local address for the machine that's connected to your home network, and then do you want to enable that port forwarding to happen? Uh, to be totally secure, don't do any port forwarding. But if you want to take your chances, if you need to have port forwarding turned on, well, that's kind of what it is. It's useful for me. Uh, once you figure it out, uh, really, it's it's uh, it's nice. It can be nice. And with this, I can access things on my home network that I otherwise could not be able to access. Uh, beyond that, uh, I would recommend using, uh, you know, to stay secure and accessing general things on your home network from outside your network using things like a VPN or Hamachi, which, of course, we've talked about in other videos as well. So that's the easiest way I can explain port forwarding. If anybody's got a better way, an easier way of doing this, I'm sure there are way more secure things. Hamachi, no port forwarding. Yeah, but unfortunately, I've got applications that don't, uh, don't uh, work with Hamachi. The iPhone doesn't exactly have a Hamachi client, nor do other devices. Anyway, uh, any, any other suggestions out there? By all means, make them, leave a comment, follow up, or you're also welcome to swing by the chat room anytime, day or night. Uh, people are always asking questions about home networking, uh, whether it has to be related to uh, Linux, Windows, OS 10, or just the internet in general. Uh, we're taking any kind of help that you'd be able to offer. By all means, suggest a way. And uh, to get to that chat room, uh, you can either use your own IRC client. You don't need to open up any ports at least that I know of, uh, but the easiest way to find us is just going by our website, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's open, with a nice flashing neon sign that says live.perillo.com. Well, there's nothing flashing, but I think you get the idea. We'll see you later.